So corruption is a big problem in India. Uh, uh, corruption used to be a problem. Uh, it continues to be a problem, right? Uh, it's gotten a lot better, uh, but it still uh, is, 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 is a big problem. India is uh, uh, one fifth, sorry, one third, one third the physical size of the US, okay? Uh, but India has five times the number of people. Uh, you know, 70% of that population, uh, which is pretty sizable, <laughs> you know, you're talking about almost 800, 900 million, 70% uh, of the population lives below the poverty line. So the root cause of corruption also is because people, you know, uh, 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 don't have basic food and electricity and water. Uh, corruption was kind of, hey, it's a necessary evil and it's a cost of doing business thing, right? Because if you don't do it, if you don't give in, if you don't pay someone to get your job done, it will never get done, <laughs> right? When you're dealing with two different cultures, you will always be able to find differences in perspectives and societal norms. Any two cultures will likely differ in areas such as food, architecture, mannerisms. These elements of culture are learned, not inherited. However, when dealing with ethical issues in business such as corruption, people in corrupt societies have been born into a system that makes unethical practices such as bribery a necessary part of everyday life. While bribery may be allowed or necessary in one country, it can be viewed as highly unethical and unnecessary in another. Now, when two contrasting cultures interact, it's important to understand the lens through which each culture views the world. Even more so, it's important to understand the factors that have made each lens so different. When you compare the population and land area of the United States to the population and land area of India, the disparity can't get much greater. Integrity is difficult to uphold when the society that you're in is actively trying to suffocate you. In the most extreme sectors of this economy, bribery is necessary to survive. In America, we can afford to avoid this unethical practice. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about India. Whereas in, in developing countries like India and uh, uh, say a lot of those other smaller countries, which are still, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're not mainstream uh, economies in the world. Uh, the corruption happens at a lower level and, you know, uh, people talk about it. Like you know, when I was growing up, uh, if, if I'm going too fast, if a cop pulls me over, you know, I would just give him 100 rupees and I wouldn't even say anything, you would just move on. Like, you want to get a driver's license? Yeah, you can go through the official route, right? The official route will take forever. It might take you like six months. But hey, you go catch one of those brokers. You have all these guys hanging around outside your DMV. So you pay them uh, and then they go pay someone inside. They don't pay across the counter or anything, but they've got a system where they can get that done. You know, like you go to a movie theater, right? So one of those Indian movies come out. It's like, a, you know, the movies come out on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, weekends and normally. It's already sold out right? Fully sold out. You can never find a ticket. But if you go to the theater, you'll have these guys hanging around scalping, right? It's a big deal. So you just go there and you buy those tickets. That's corruption. You see scalping happening here too, in the US. What is Ticketmaster? What is SeatGeek? Right? That's scalping. That's corruption right there. Someone else is buying a ticket. We don't talk about it because, hey, it's a company doing it. You know what I mean? In the United States, bribery is viewed as morally incorrect and is rarely used. While bribery is not good, it is necessary for the majority of Indian people. This is due to two major factors, overpopulation and poverty. These two factors make it nearly impossible to live in India without participating in bribery. This is why bribery is viewed differently through an American lens. You have to think about what you would do if you lived in an environment where bribery is common and possibly necessary for you and your family to survive. Do you think it is okay to bribe a bouncer to get into a bar faster? No, but I would probably do it. I feel like I would do it. 
do you think it's okay to bribe a bartender if it means you get quicker service? Um, again, no, but I would probably do it. Do you think it's okay to bribe a teacher for a better grade? No. I wouldn't do that. Okay. And lastly, do you think it's okay to bribe law enforcement to get out of something? No, but I'm sure it happens a lot. Overall, this project has taught us how to view cultures through different lenses. Everyone has different experiences, cultural values, norms, and attitudes that contribute to their identity. Although we found similarities among particular individuals from India and those who have visited India, we acknowledge that every individual has unique experiences that may not coincide with the societal norms of that culture or country. We understand the importance of straining away from the ethnocentrism as societal norms may differ across different countries. Although certain cultural tendencies may not align with our American views, we see how our perceptions may differ had we grown up in a completely different cultural context. From the restaurant visits to learning about ethical business issues to interviewing four individuals who relate to Indian culture in some way, we were able to construct a more reliable and well-rounded perception of Indian culture and its corruption than what is typically seen within movies or TV shows. If any of this information about Indian culture piques your interest, there is an organization on campus called the South Asian Intercultural Association, where any student can learn more about South Asian countries, including India.